So these are all the leftover shoe orders and tote bag orders I need to get out of here. We actually have a little gift for the postman. He's been helping us with pretty much shipping out all of these. I remember the first day he asked me about the shoes and kind of saw it on my feet. So we will gift him one pair. He told me it was a size 10. So when he picks up these ones, we're gonna surprise him with get this right shout out to all the essential workers doing their things i know it's like hospital people but we can't forget the delivery people bringing us our mails i remember i didn't forget you and the newspaper i told you so that's, so that's the one that you're helping us kind of Boom, sneakers on top. Kind of give it like a neighborhood feel. And uh, yeah, it's actually kind of dusty. Look at that. Damn, I didn't think about that before putting it up. So I'll try to clean that later, but here you go. Here is the sneakers. Let me give you guys a little headache. All right, so let's do on the fly fit check glasses ground cover love them uh, i'm gonna talk about them in a separate video kind of giving you guys a quick review whatnot maybe like in a pickups video but i like them a lot fit really nice just a simple black uh, shade nothing too fancy the hoodie we have the gianetti factory i think it's called the excess hoodie that he dropped recently he did a multitude of colors and this one pretty much caught my eye, which is kind of like a burnt, washed out orange. Beautiful crop fit to it and I like it a lot. We have a vintage military jacket. I forgot the exact name of the jacket, but it's a vintage military jacket. So for pants, these are samples for, these are already samples. They were supposed to drop in spring, summer, but still doing some revisions because I'm not satisfied with the fit. And last but not least for boots, we have the hair on Preston pineapple boots and I just kind of switched the laces to white laces and then we have Ore Art Studio paint bag and that is pretty much my fit on the fly all right so fit on the fly deuce the Bottega store here LV there Gucci right there. It's calm, so if anybody's like trying to skip the crowds on Fifth Avenue, definitely consider coming here. Well, they do have all the normal high-end stores that they would carry on Fifth Ave. Uh, boots, green boots. Gang shit. So December 31st is officially Doom day, man, I heard the bad news about it. Absolutely devastated, I couldn't even believe it. For today, we will be blasting one of my favorite albums, MF Doom. I don't even care about the YouTube copyright at this point, I just wanna to listen to some Doom. So peep the beautiful artwork, I absolutely love this. Like, come on, look how gorgeous this is. Let me open it up for y'all, bam look at this comes with two different uh records beautiful olive green color scheme going on and the second one is kind of like a pink right here so i'm gonna listen to some mf doom you know just enjoy this album which is honestly one of my favorites 
give it a sec for the pain to start This wreck right here, it ain't for the faint of heart They thought they saw it, have no fear, the ninja here Feel them like the tinge in your air from drinking ginger beer When it's on local head, go lay low and beat it like beef Naughty go cocoa rag on queso If you say so, send me a letter or better We can see each other in real life Just so you can feel me like a steel knife At least so you can see the white of the eyes Bright with some vibes once they finish spitting lies Associates, these are boys and girls Happy New Year All right, guys, January 2nd, 2021, and uh, much needed appointment to the tattoo parlor. 2020 was like the foundation of getting tattoos, and I feel like this year will definitely be the year where I kind of complete the arm. So, we're gonna walk there. It's a different day, but I'm pretty much wearing the same outfit, so just switch the pants out and the boots, but the top portion is pretty much one-to-one. -one. So yeah, footage at the tattoo parlor. Let's go. Like even when you do that one. Right now we will go to the record shop. I just wanna dig for some new stuff and uh, have a little gift for my man Jamal. So we'll surprise him when you get there. For the most part, it's gonna be a relaxing day. Nothing too serious planned. Just, you know, hanging around. Uh, yeah. All right, so while we walk, peep this. So this is the sample Ori wallet. Overall, very happy with the shape looks exactly how I wanted it to be couple of changes firstly just the glossiness you guys can see how glossy the logo is not too much of a fan of that so we're gonna mat that out but for the most part I'm actually really satisfied with it so it's your classic you know this card holder with three slots on each side with the main component in the middle and uh, one addition that I wanted to do was to add the hearing just you know so you can tie your keys or tie it to like your pants or jacket, whatever the case may be. So not, not entirely sure what's the release date of this, but I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, yeah, oh, also made from repurposed military fabric, which is always a plus. All right, we are back. Officially back. It's been a while. I really love this place. Looking for more jazz records, so let's do that. Dude, a couple times, but like, Thanks, buddy. dude, yeah. Has a subway um, station on the sauce. So we so made, we made that. Nah, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we gonna look at some records. Let's look at some records. I have to still show you the video, but I took. It. All right, so we got a new box, bunch of jazz records. My website. Just with. That. Yeah, that's my website. That's it. That's it, simple. What, why don't you... All right. 
Who are you trying to? Who are trying to hide these? They hide the. They hit the. Trap call quest join and the pop rock. Okay, we are doing the Wu Tang, low end, Chet Baker, Frank Sinatra, and last but not least, this is the Miles Davis. Wait, who is this again? That's Miles Davis. No, That's but like the, the the soundtrack, the scaffold. It's huh. got an English scaffold. Ascenseur pour les chafaux. French, yeah, I can see the titles in the back. Chez le photographe du motel. Huh. Interesting. Alright, so all that. Always a nice time. Oh, I'm like pointing the wrong place. Basically, every time I go there, I literally talk with him for like almost an hour now. We just kind of, you know, catching up and stuff like that. He gave me like Christmas gifts, two records. Shout out to Jamal. He's the GOAT. Love this guy. And uh, we're actually gonna be working on some stuff. I'm gonna keep it under wraps for now, but in the near future, we have some stuff we're doing together. Very, very excited. Look at the Issei completes bag. This one is really neat. I like this one a lot. It's like a plethora of different colors. We have sticks in the building with the Ores I see you. Okay. Uh-huh. Right there. Uh -huh. It's a will in the cut. We're not oh. gonna say his his last name because we're not gonna give out his government. <laughs> right here with the Salomon Salomon Solomons. 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 Clean. Solomons in the well, like teal color. Yeah. Really so clean. clean. And then we got the villain. Good boy. Your boy right here with the Miharas. It's the good Miharas. I see you. Something like <laughs> a flight suit almost. Oh, yeah, it's a flight suit. Dude. What's so going on, bro? What you going on? No, that's oh, not. Wait, we, we can't even show Yeah, no, nah, we can't show <laughs> it. I'm going to zoom in, but nah, nah, we're not going to talk about it. Here we have the Miharas with the rib stop. So we're at the HQ, just kind of chilling. Happy New Year. Yes, sir. Um, 2021. 2021. Year. Yeah. I feel like every in every vlog, he's like plotting some shit. Like, in the other vlog, he was like, yeah, we doing this and this. Birdman hands. Yeah, yeah. Birdman hands, so. So we are having a discussion about Playboy Cardi's album. So far, not, personally, me, I'm not a fan of it. Um, how do y'all feel? All right, Raph, let's uh, start with you. All right, the first one through 10 is dog shit. I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> after 10, there are some bangers on it. Like, you have New Neon is fucking great. Uh, new Tank is nice. fucking amazing. But I feel like New Neon definitely sounds like some old party though, low key. Yeah, I think well, that's new why neon I fuck with it. Up. That's the reason why we fuck with it? it. That was a leak. Right. New Neon was a leak. Oh, it was already released. It was already, it was already released. Yeah. Gotcha, all right. Yeah, so, so good. Overall, I will give it a calm... <laughs> five. Damn. Out of ten. Damn, all right. Okay, yeah, well, wrong. how you feel about it? Um, personally, uh, we waited for nothing. Wait how, wait, how long has it been, like, in terms of years? Like, three years? Like, three years, uh, three right? Years. Three years. Yeah, two or three years, I think. Um, but come on, like, yeah. After Die Lit, I would expect, like, something along that realm. But it was completely different. But definitely, like, second half is listenable. First half is just noise, like, just straight-up noise. Chaos. Can't, can't listen to it. Raph, right? It sounds like 
the album, like the current album that we got was just produced like in a week. It, it sounds like it was sounds like, super fucking rushed, right? It sounds like some uh, Kanye kind of rushed thing. Because Kanye does yeah, that too. You know, yeah. just say that? It kind of sounds like Jesus a little bit. Tiny bit. Well, no, hell no. Nah, no. but like, I'm talking about the noise. Don't do that shit, bro. I heard Kanye was like executive producer. I mean, Man, but I'm not gonna be nice about it. I mean, let me get the good part out of the way first. <laughs> I go. feel like. I fuck what he was trying to do, like making a new sound and trying to push the envelope, but like this shit is trash. <laughs> it's unlistenable. Shit is whack. Very disappointed. Do better, Cardi. I need you. Matter of fact, just drop the leaks. The leak hole out of red. I want that instead. You can have this shit. Oh man. If it, if it comes back on the deluxe with all the leaks, I'll be happy. always forgive him, bro. Forgive him. He doesn't That's fucking but he doesn't mean it though. Because he intended us to listen to whatever he dropped. So I feel like a leak is just like okay guys, my bad. Like, I feel like the reason why some of the leaks that didn't, didn't make it on, onto the album is because like sample clearances and shit. You know how that shit goes. Right, right. You couldn't get it cleared, you couldn't get well, it. Well That's the verdict. Trash. Um two out of ten. No, two out of I don't two know. I wouldn't give it two out of two ten. Out of ten. Nah, there, no, 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 no. Two out of ten. It's it's, it's a, five. Two a good a good five. five. A good five. I feel like five because I'm very stern in that two. Half two of the other songs are fucking noise. I so felt like he five. he he really tried to 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 push the envelope when it comes to rap, in terms of being like more like rock metal. Work, but you know, just played out. I don't know. He's trying to be rock star. That shit is whack. I don't know. The whole like, I don't know. I honestly kind of understand what you mean when you're talking about the whole Yeezus thing, because it was the same thing with Kanye West's album. It was experimental. When it came out, it was so like out of left field, and like everybody was doing one kind of vibe. First listen to Yeezus was like, what the fuck? It was like, what? Yeah, facts, facts, facts. But then after it was like, nah, this shit is. It's great. Nah, it's generally great. Right. I didn't have that same feeling after listening to this shit. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I didn't. But okay, question: How long did it take you to realize that Yeezus was like? I don't like. I don't say it's a masterpiece because I don't think it's a masterpiece, but yeah. it's it's great, right? Yeah. Uh, I would say like. How long did it take you to like realize? Seven listens, but like I still went back to it. This I have no urge to go Honestly, back to it. Uh, like a few yeah. listens, but then when I saw the when I went to go see it live. Yeah. And I, that I, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's this, a, this is this is great. Like. Okay. Last question before we get the hell out of here. If okay, considering like obviously it's COVID right now, right. but if COVID wasn't a thing, right? And he were to do like a live show. Cool. Would you go? Flavor Cardi? That shit might be yes. crazy. Yes. That yeah. might be crazy. That's the thing, right? So I feel I like that's the definitely a factor. Right. Cause I feel like this album is something where like you would listen to it with a bunch of people and just kinda rage, right? Yeah. yeah. Like I'm dead ass listening to this shit in Christmas by myself in my room, like with my earphones. Like it's not the intended <laughs> environment to listen to this music, so I don't. I think that's also plays a factor. It definitely does. Like what? Signing the drop. All right, done. We're done talking. <laughs> um, Cardi yeah. album was a huh, pretty divided, comparing all, right. to all of our scores. I feel he, like we all said it was trash. Right. We're gonna leave it at a five point five. Yeah, five point five. Five point five for still Cardi. Still sticking with the two. Dang. All right, bet. <laughs> all right. All right. Production is here. We are officially ready to go. Let me just show you guys the updated box. So it's like cardboard compared to the V1s, which was not, I'm not gonna lie, flimsy box. And these are the V2s. Look at the that. The part of the vlog where I do the pickups. So I want to quickly show you guys some stuff. We're not gonna be doing B-roll and whatnot. Yeah, so we have a couple of things. I will be doing a proper pickups video which will be posted after this one. Check out my YouTube videos and I noticed that I haven't done a proper pickups video in the past seven months, which is a crime. So since the pandemic hit, I wasn't really inclined to picking up a lot of things, hence the reason why I just didn't film any pickups videos. But during that time, I still do have a bunch of wonderful things that I want to show to you guys. So for the next video, I will be doing a proper pickups video with the b-roll and all that good stuff all right so if you guys hear clicking my office has this like weird click when the heating turns on that's like new york city like there's always something not working here camera but me filming it here i can definitely hear it or the vlog let's get into it number one we have this kind of like i don't want to say knit but this is beautiful sweater from uniqlo this is like the white trouser hack as this piece is from the women's section 
super cozy as you guys can see here. The color itself is more of like a, I would say like a mint and lime was like combined together, almost like a pistachio green, it's very cozy. This is a size XL, which is the biggest size for women and it fits me quite perfect. I would say it's like a medium to large if you kind of like switch it over to men's sizing. This item specifically is currently on sale. I don't think they advertise it on the website, but if you go to your local Uniqlo, you might just kind of see it in the sales rack. It did come in this color, as well as a charcoal gray, which I am currently looking for as nobody has it. So it did come with like a pair of like matching sweatpants, but the silhouette and shape is a little bit more uh, form fitting. Obviously it's a women piece, so I just stuck to this one right here. Very nice, fits like a glove. Um, I'm not gonna be doing an unbody, but it fits quite well and just the color really, really nice. So for our next set of items right here, this is going to be once again from Uniqlo and it's like these like side bags. The material itself is like a nylon bag, very simple. It does have the adjustable strap. Nice, just like an everyday kind of carrying bag. You put your phone, wallet, keys, and uh, you know, it's a pretty nice, piece to kind of just wear it over your jacket and things like that. And for color number two, we do have it in this like nice beige cream color. So this item is available in pretty much all your Uniqlo stores and it is $15. Very, very nice bag. It does also come in different colorways such as black, orange, uh, olive green, and cream. There's a plethora of different colors if you're not interested in these ones, but in my opinion, these are the best colors. Obviously, ray green. Can't go wrong with that. So those are only the two pieces I picked up at Uniqlo. Let's talk about the next item. If you're a fan of Capital, this brand called Canoon, I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, but they're based out of Toronto, Canada. And I bought two pieces from their drop and I just recently got it in the mail as it was kind of lost in transit for like over a month. Blame USPS for that. But we have it right here. So this is the Canoon indigo dye sweater. As the name entails, indigo dye, beautiful blue. Kind of has like a nice discoloration um, throughout the garment. Kind of like a white contrast stitching throughout the entire crew neck. And the kicker, which kind of reminds me of Capital, is the P signs on both elbows, which is really, really nice. You can guys, if I hold it like that, you can kind of see it in the back. Very Japanese Americana look. I'm going to link their Instagram down below. I think they're a fairly small brand. They did drop a couple of items here and there, but this was, I guess, one of them that really caught my eye. Item number two right here, we do have a bum bag. Kind of reminds me of the Capital Snufkin bag, but it's like the on steroids version of the Snufkin bag. Like a seafoam blue, almost greenish. And uh, as you guys can see, the braided cord here. It's an absolutely huge bag, so if you're carrying a bunch of, I guess, fruits, and things like that. This is like an appropriate bag. As I mentioned earlier, this brand is heavily inspired from, you know, Japanese Americana and specifically Capital as, you know, the bag here, peace sign there. So far, so good. Or like a camping trip. Let me kind of put it on. You can have it like that. Ooh, you guys get the gist. This is not exactly how it looks, but you guys get the gist. You can kind of see it there. Camping bag, or if you're going on a long trip and you don't want to have like, I guess, a traditional bag, which you can just stuff everything in the back here. Looks nice and uh, yeah, definitely great Americana um, looks to the brand. A-N-O-U-N, Canoon. Let's move on to the last item. This was sent over by the beautiful folks at Canada Goose. We're a big fan of the channel and your work and we wanna send you our latest collaboration with OVO, which is Drake's line and they have this real tree camo winter jacket and dude first and foremost this is my first canada goose piece ever i've seen you know the other jackets and just the quality on it is exceptional this is in my opinion the best quality winter jacket i've ever felt in my life all the details are on point it feels like a substantial item and uh yeah so there is the traditional canada goose patch on the sleeve I would say the only detail that I'm not too crazy about would be this OVO patch. What I intend to do is just to paint it in black so it can kind of be more tonal to the jacket uh, because you know this is obviously the Canada Goose patch, but this one is just sticks out. It's it looks so like out of place. I don't know why I decide to you know put a big OVO patch here. Regardless, very very nice jacket. It comes with like that 
can hang it like this. so since i got it i think i rocked it once when it's extremely cold here but the weather hasn't really been at a level where i can wear it every day so i'm gonna leave it in the closet if ever snowstorm whatever the case happens this will definitely be my go-to jacket once again thank you canada goose for sending this over this is an absolute gem and uh yeah perfect winter jacket item showcase is done had a few things i wanted to kind of throw into this vlog but as i said earlier i will be doing a traditional kind of pickups video with the bureau footage and you know just how i do it normally so that video will be posted after this one and uh i did also want to do a capital video finally um after that pickups video we'll continue to vlog i'm not sure like where this is going to be put inside thank you guys for uh i guess checking out the pickup section in the video let's move on to the next part of the vlog let's have a little discussion all right so let's have a little discussion let's talk about mf doom um you know recent passing of mf doom untimely death i feel like it came out of nowhere you know new year's eve i was just waiting for the new year and i got the news a lot of people were messaging me about it quite upsetting as you know i'm a huge mf doom fan ever since you know i started really getting into rap mf doom was one of the prime artist that I really looked up to and just you know how different he was you know musically and just you know in terms of his wordplay earliest memory of MF Doom was just you know looking at the pictures of how he looked you know even without listening to his music just that mask you know I'm a huge comic book reader and Dr. Doom is arguably my favorite villain and uh, just him off rip looking like Dr. Doom was just piqued my interest. Having more into his music, I was just like, man, this dude is different. His wordplay is just, you know, he mastered the English language low key. Like I'm not going front. Um, just the way that he puts words together, his cadence is very, you know, non-traditional. He just, he kind of stops abruptly, continues rapping and just the way that he kind of puts rhymes together. The combination of all of these things you know, instantly made me a fan of MF Doom. Hearing about his death really, you know, hit. And I was I was chatting with a couple friends about this, but MF Doom, like, he's such a, I would say, I don't know, he's like a character. Like, even hearing about him dying on Halloween day, which is super ironic as he wears a mask, and, uh, you know, the fact that he died on Halloween day, but we hear about it two months later. It's like such an MF Doom thing to do. Um, so it kind of just like, I don't, it builds, it continues on building on that character of just like how secretive and just how unorthodox he was, you know, compared to everybody else. So yeah, I don't really have much to say, you know, with the death of, you know, MF Doom, I'm glad that a lot of people can start, you know, knowing about him and enjoying his music. Um, hence the reason why I'm not a fan of like gatekeepers or people who are like, yeah, now that he's dead, people are talking about him and like bumping his music. I feel like people who do that, that just want to kind of keep for themselves isn't really, you know, something that I mess with. If you end up being a fan of Doom after his death, I feel like it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So I just wanted to say a little quick tidbit about MF Doom, talk about him in the video. You know, we're going to end the video here. I feel like it's a pretty lengthy vlog. Ray, YouTube, we out. Peace. Mm -hmm.